everybody? It's Henry and Moses Blowers. Good morning. It's about 11.30, close to 12 o'clock, and it's another gorgeous day. Today, I'm not going to be doing anything in terms of small engine equipment. Today, I'm actually going to be working on a car. I don't do many videos about cars, but I'm going to take the day and do the rear brakes on my wife's 2013 Mercedes-Benz ML350. As you all know, they got rid of the ML name. And it's now called a GLE. Same car. Though. About a year ago, I was supposed to do all four brakes, fronts and rears. But when I inspected them, the fronts uh, looked like they were worse off than the rears, and they usually are if, they're, if all four brakes are done at the same time because the fronts are going to wear out faster than the rears. Uh, so at my wife's most recent inspection, the guy says, you know, you could use rear brakes. And I figured that since I only did the fronts. Uh, I had an issue when I did the fronts. Um, I messed up the sensor on it, right? And so the light wouldn't go off. So I just bought a new sensor off of eBay, popped it on and went off, you know, that's all it takes. I think I bought another one for the rears just in case. Uh, I have the brakes, they're ceramic, they're made by Bosch. I paid like $29 or something, 30 bucks on eBay. Fronts included, you know, so uh, total it was like $60. A couple of sensors, it was $10 each, whatever. So uh, I think I was in it for 80 bucks for the brakes. They wanted to charge 1800 at the dealership. I'm sorry, the Steelership. Yeah, I know, they probably was gonna replace all the rotors and the calipers and all that stuff, which is completely ridiculous. You just need brake pads, provided that everything surrounding it was in still good condition, you know? And as long as the brake pads never wore down to the metal and completely trashed the rotor, you can just replace the pads. And if anybody tells you any different, they're stealing from you. So, I'm gonna get started on that. Yes, I realize that on these German cars, right? Maybe not just German, but most advanced cars. You need a scan tool to disengage the parking brake. But there is a special coding thing where you press uh, the phone answer button and the OK button at the same time, whatever, on your steering wheel, right? You get into this brake settings menu where you can uh, manually disengage the electronic uh, parking brake. So I'm going to try that later to make sure that it's disengaged so I can push the piston back in and put the pads on. I'm going to document it this time because why not document it, right? If you're going to do anything, put it on video. You go through a little bit more trouble videotaping it, but you know what? That's what YouTubers do, right? So let's get started. I've never had a heavy duty jack. I've always had these cheap $25, $30 jacks that only go up like yo high. Well, as you can see from the SUV, it's already yo high. And I remember that I have tried this jack on this car before, where you jack it up to the highest level and the wheel is still touching the ground. So I've got a couple of wood pieces here and a, uh, and a paver to put it underneath to lift up the, uh, the height of the jack a little bit more. And all I need is a couple of inches more, you know, so that I'll do. And for safety, I've got my uh, jacks ready so that when I have my head in the wheel well, hopefully it doesn't fall on me and kill me, you know what I mean? Listen, so as you guys know, I had my entire driveway redone about a year ago. Did my walkway, my stoop, all with pavers. But I got this new blacktop asphalt here on my driveway. And uh, I got it from my uh, friend, now friend, Walter Sura of Sura Brothers asphalt and paving. He told me that I need to reseal my driveway for the first time around September. It's September and this entire week is supposed to be flawless. It's not supposed to rain or anything. So while I've contacted a bunch of seal coat companies, right, probably six of them, they all range between $150 and $250. And this is all over instant message they haven't actually come and seen it yet. I could just see it right now when he comes over. He goes, oh, well, you got a walkway going from your driveway to your backyard. You got to seal that. You could park like 
four cars over here. You know, you got to seal that. You got pavers over there, so we have to put masking tape over to make sure we don't get it dirty. All that other jazz, and we can try to jack it up to like two fifty, three hundred dollars. You know. So I was doing some research on Home Depot. You know, you could actually do it yourself. I could just go and buy a couple of gallons of that black stuff, right? And a big squeegee. I could do it myself. You know what? I want to do it myself. I think each jug of that stuff is like $19.99. So I'll buy like one or two of those things, 40 bucks, get a big squeegee, another 10 bucks. I can do the whole thing myself for 50 bucks. What do you guys think? Should I try it? You'll have to find out after I do the brakes. Uh, I want to tell you all something kind of personal too. You guys know my dog Boba? <coughs> Well, did you know that 90% um, of um, cancers in dogs, testicular cancer is very prevalent in dogs, and you have to get them neutered, even though my dog is not a show dog. I think my whole family wants to have him neutered so he's less aggressive. You know, he's just a doodle, but he acts like a German Shepherd, you know, around other dogs too. He's very hyper, he's very aggressive. So I think it has to do with the fact that he still has his marbles. You know what I mean? So uh, tomorrow is also the day that he goes in to get neutered. I'm very nervous. But I don't think I should do the seal coat tomorrow. Maybe I'll just go and buy the stuff tomorrow. Got the wheel off, it was pretty easy. Got a jack stand under there, and a jack stand under that bracket there. That ought to be good for now, because that's a little sketchy, just a little. If you're looking at the brake pads there, it honestly has like another nine months to go before that goes away, but we're gonna change them anyway. Let's go get the new pads and compare them. Here are the new pads. Ceramic. One set. Made by Bosch. Synthetic brake component lubricant. I see. So probably half is what it appears to be. Yeah, so they're like half gone. Not terrible, you know what I mean? I probably could have put this off for another six months or so. But let's see how the caliper comes off. Looks like it's just that bolt there. And that bolt there, two bolts. And there's the sensor disconnect. So let me go find the right socket to get that bolt out. And then I believe we have to disengage the parking brake. So now I have to disengage the electric parking brake on this 2013 Mercedes ML350. I don't have a key, I have a push button. Press the push button to the first notch and then quickly press the answer the phone button and the OK button, hold it for five seconds. And then that should go into the uh, brake pad uh, replacement mode. Remember to always have the uh, screen on miles, you know? So I'm going to try it. I'm going to push it, press that and that for five seconds. That didn't work. I'm going to try it again. Okay. Mode one, this, that, five seconds. And there we go. Vehicle data right there.
You guys see that? Now I'll scroll down to pad replacement and press OK. That'll retract the electro electronic brake. To move to fitting position, OK. And I can hear the motor moving now. I thought for sure this was going to be metric, right? But actually, the half inch wrench works is a, is a better fit. I'm going to remove these bolts. So of course, it's like what I always say, Murphy's Law, when something goes wrong, they all go wrong. Uh, of course I broke the brake sensor off of the brake pad while trying to remove the caliper, right? And I have another one. I just can't find it because it's been like a year, you know what I mean? Worst comes to worst, I'll try to, I'll try to make it work, but I still gotta go and find it. Tries me. I literally spent an hour looking for this son of a bitch. And it was in a place where I never thought it would be either. You know what I mean? You think it's somewhere, but then you keep looking and looking in the most obscure places. It's there. I'm like, well, what is this doing there? I mean, I hope this is it. I remember it being in a new bag, but this was just free and loose somewhere. I wonder if this is the old one. Well, it sure is better than the broken one that I have. I'm going to try it. Kind of clamp. Now I'm pushing the piston in. And it is moving freely, slowly. And uh, with these things, I like to be very uh, precise. So I'm going really slow. Pushing that piston in. I have a feeling that uh, that brake sensor light's gonna come on and I'm gonna end up having to go and buy a sensor from Mercedes. I just know it. So there it is. It didn't take a long time at all. It popped right in there, no problem. I'm just worried about this sensor. But it's easy enough to, you know, replace it, you know? Wiring went back into these brackets. And uh, I've inspected everything, it looks pretty good. And uh, the new pads, they went in very easily, like I said. So, I think it's all right. I'm gonna put the wheel back on and do the other side.
I just put on new brake pads for my rear brakes of this car. Like I always say, you think it's going to take like an hour, but some always happens. And my deal today was spending an hour searching for that damn brake sensor that I just couldn't find. And I ended up finding it, but it was in like a place where I never thought I would put it. You know what I mean? But anyway, so I'm going to re-engage now the uh, parking brake, the electronic parking brake, and then see if that sensor light goes on. If it doesn't, I'll be so happy. But if it does go on, I'm going to have to go to Mercedes parts department and buy an OEM sensor. The sensor I got was uh, from China. I wanted to show you guys the condition of the brake pads. This one doesn't seem that bad. This one's really bad, see? Really close to the uh, end. This one's okay. And the rest are all pretty even, with the exception of this one, which is odd. I didn't use any of this synthetic brake component lubricant. I didn't think I needed it, you know? It says apply to all moving hardware components. Well, what the hell moves? Nothing moves in there. So I didn't use it. Installed just fine without it. I guess I'll keep it. So another recommendation from uh, my wife's most recent inspection of this car was that you needed new front tires. They wanted to charge you like Six hundred dollars to have them put on just the fronts. So we bought these brand new tires online for two hundred three. We'll have uh, Costco put them on for fifteen dollars, mounted and balanced. I'll save one hundred fifty dollars or so. So that's it. Successful brake job. Mercedes wanted to charge $1,800 for fronts and rears. I did the rears $35. $26.95 for the brake pads. I think I spent about $6.95 on the sensor like a year ago. So $35 compared to $900. Crazy, right? I did just change the brake pads. If you had damage to your rotors and they needed to be resurfaced, that would have cost some more money. But honestly, brake rotors aren't very expensive. You could actually buy the vented drilled hold ones for maybe 30 bucks a piece or less, you know? I remember changing my son's Acura into uh, vented disc brakes too, uh, changing the rotors. It's really not very expensive. The job was very easy today, provided that I could find my sensor. That took a while to find. And uh, I wanna thank my friend Robert Nighthawk over in Elkton, Maryland, who uh, paid me a visit recently and brought me some tools. He brought me these Pittsburgh ratchet wrenches and the half inch one with the ratchet, it made my job so much easier, you know? I didn't even have to whip out any rack, uh, sockets or anything today. So, uh, pretty cool. I'm pretty satisfied with the job, you know, uh, to do some research on how to, you know, retract that electronic parking brake so that you would be able to push in the piston to put in the brake pads. That's something you gotta search and do research on on YouTube. But listen, you guys all know I'm a perfect example. There's something to be found on YouTube that you need to know. It's there. Somebody has done a video on it, you know? Hope you guys enjoyed my uh, day today of wrenching a car. How about that, huh? Tomorrow I'm uh, getting back to small engines. I'm a little out of my element when it comes to cars, but brake pads I can do. Thanks for joining me today. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers.